Hello, welcome to another edition of Sun Dragon Tips and Tricks. Today we are we are recovering after a night of storms, <laughs> but we're gonna do our best to film today. I've got uh, Brian and Alexander in the other room. If you hear any screeching, they are playing Monopoly. So <laughs> um, I thought today for knitting, we would talk about picking up stitches because that's something that my nephew Ben has had to do on a white squirrel kit he is making in Illinois while I help him from North Carolina. And there are different parts he's encountered where he has to pick up stitches along the side of a piece and also along the bottom. Now, some of this I've kind of talked about and done in the long tail cast on, but we're going to maybe do it a little bit more in depth today to talk about some things that can help you with the when the pattern says pick up and knit. There are many different ways to do this. You can do it with one needle. You can do it with two needles. You can do it with a crochet hook. Today we're going to talk about how to do it with two needles, actually picking up with one needle and knitting with the other. I'll draw what I can and then we'll get to it. Let's go. So here's my example of a little piece of stockinette, which is where all the V's are on the side facing you of knitting. And let's say we wanted to pick up some stitches. Say we were going to make a circle around this. We want to pick up some stitches here along the edge. And then we want to go along the bottom to pick up some stitches along the bottom. Let's see how we would do that. Now my first rule of thumb is it is always better to go on to and when picking up stitches, you want to try to get under two strands. When, you, when you're doing the picking. You want to get under two strands. It'll be more stable. Let's see, more stable. Less gappy. If that's even a word. One strand you might pull and leave a big hole. So, to do that along the side, you want to make sure that you are picking up stitches one whole stitch in. We're going to be going under these strands. You want to make sure you have these two strands, you're going under both of them, not just the outside edge. Now this can be hard along this, the outside edges are called the selvage edge. I may have spelled that wrong, so I will put in the notes if I did that. I'm horrible with spelling of some of these. This can look all kinds of wonky and you won't always see it as clearly as in the drawing. But know that that's what we're going for. Sometimes you want to roll it out. So let's take a look. Let's actually pivot this. If we were picking up stitches along this edge, we would turn it and I'm going to redraw this because what I would want you to do is, is actually pull it a little bit away from the other stitches. And if you do that, you can see a little bit better. Let's try to add some detail in here of what we're looking at. You will actually see like little strands going across. And it's those holes between those little strands is where you want to put your needle. So like this would be one, two, three, and four. If you can't see those numbers very clearly, I'll try to zoom in on it a little if I can. But, um, but those are the holes. Just look for the red dots if the numbers don't come out. And this is our right hand needle that's going to keep working across. Your left hand needle if there's enough space, sometimes this is super tight, you actually want to stick it in under these outside two strands. So you would stick it in, your left hand needle would go in there to pick it up and put it on the needle 
and then you'd go ahead and treat it like a regular, although bumpy, stitch and knit it. And then when it comes off the needle, it comes off, well, when you stick your left hand, it's like left hand needle in to pick up, right hand needle goes in, wrap around, pull back through, left hand needle just comes out and it drops off, but you have an extra needle, extra, ha, <laughs> extra loop. I'll get my vocabulary right sometime. So that you do it with one, two, three, four. Always making sure you get under a whole V, a whole two strands. Left needle scoops it up, right needle knits it. Now the bottom edge, if we pivot this one more time, the bottom edge presents a little bit more of a challenge because things may or may not look quite as clear. But what I'm going to show you with the actual knitting is that there are holes there. The cast on edge, it depends on how you did the cast on edge, but hopefully there are double strands along the cast on edge that you're trying to get underneath. And if you think about this as being reverse V's, like if we take this out again, the V's may look like they're running in a different direction. But if you can think about this as here is a V and here is a V and here is a V, it's a little different. Let's see if maybe we can even give it a different color. If you think about them as here's a V and here's a V and here is a V, the V's run in a different direction then you have a new spot where you want to be putting your needle in, your left needle. If we just give them dots this time, the center of the V is a great place to go. You might have to fudge something over here. If you, if you don't have enough stitches, you fudge it, absolutely. But the same thing, you're gonna put your left needle under Pick it up so that your right needle can come and knit it. Left needle will go under. And every time it finishes knitting, the left needle just comes out and lets it go. What you end up with is you will end up with extra loops on what's way back here. <laughs> we go way back around. Try not to get dizzy. All of the spots I've marked with blue that you pick up with your left hand needle, when you knit them, you'll end up with more loops on your right hand needle. This one is not as easy to draw to give you the concept. So let's go do it and we'll show it to you. So here's my swatch I have tried to do as close to the picture as possible. More stitches on here, but here we have where we're gonna start going down the side. Now it could be you're picking up stitches and you don't have any here. Like you've cast off a piece and then need to pick up and go a new way. That In that case, you're not rounding a corner, which can make it a lot easier. But we're gonna do this as if we were rounding a corner, at least for this side. And then we may have to take a totally different approach to do this side. This is a too tight a corner to really come around with the number of stitches I have here. But what I was mentioning about the selvage edge, the second column in looks like pretty defined stitches to me, but the edge, that looks pretty wonky, doesn't it? But the most important thing is we still have a V and a V. If you uncurl it, you can see it. And if we pull on it, You'll see those strands I was talking about. We're aiming for the, for the holes between those strands between the first column and the second column of stitches. So some people like to just scooch in with their right needle and scoop and pull back through. I think for beginners, it's really helpful if there's space. If this is really tight, it's harder. But if, if there's space, you're going to take your empty left hand needle, you're going to stick it in that hole. Remember if we pull, we've got a strand here, a strand here, and the V, the two strands up top. Stick it in and pull up. It's thicker than a regular stitch, but then we can come in, 
I keep my finger here if this is going to fall off. We can come in and treat it like a regular knit stitch and pull it back under and then the left hand needle just comes out and lets it go. You've got one extra stitch. If you have to keep track between stitches here and stitches you're picking up, you may want to put a stitch marker there. But then I can look at where my strand is and pull on it and say that hole has already been done because look, it tugs on it. So I want to skip over one vertical strand there and go in here and go under the whole gobbledygook on the edge with my left needle. Stick my right needle in like a knit stitch. Go ahead and knit it. I've got two now. I have two more holes here. This is the one I just did. If you go into the one you already did and try to do a stitch, it'll just end up with two wraps around it. And you'll, you'll know, because it'll look wonky. It won't have de definitive stitches. This last one here. So I just did this. That's where my strand is. Go to the next hole. Pick up and knit. And that has pulled the whole edge up. Now, if I was in a, gonna keep going, that would be kind of hard. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you what going along the bottom edge would look like if we had a completely new needle. But we still are going to have left needle, right needle. So this bottom edge starts here. And I'm actually gonna take some of these off so we can see what's going on. Okay, now I mentioned in the drawing, we're gonna look for the upside down, we're gonna look for the V's that are running the other direction. So like here's one, right here, okay? I'm gonna go over until I've got, I've got a clear one here and then I have an extra stitch over here. Now this would probably be if you were going around the whole edge where your last pickup was from the edge. But let's treat that. I've got all this stuff along here. I can get as close to the top as I can. This one's a little weird. I'm just trying to find my first spot to do it. I'm going to pick up. I'm going to stick my other needle in. We're going to ignore my third needle there, who's just hanging out. And I'm going to knit. If I had the time, I would have cast him off, but you know, under a deadline here, kids playing Monopoly. So. Here's my, the top of my next row of V's going this way, looking like they're pointing down, right here. And that's one strand I wanna to try to get under two. Again, it depends on the type of cast on you've done. If you have two strands there, a long tail cast on will give you two strands to make it really hardy. If you go under one, sometimes that can pull really loose and then you've got gappy holes. So if you can get under two, pick up, under with your left hand, your right hand needle to knit, left hand needle drops off. So he doesn't scrape on the ground quite so much. Here's the one I just did. I want to go to the next V, top of a V, which actually means skipping two strands in front. Into the center of that V muscle your other needle in there if it's tight so you can knit pull it back under take this needle out i've picked up three the cool thing is if you shoot for the top of those v's when you start knitting these stitches it will look like it just keeps going you'll have a little bit of a seam on the back but it will look like it just keeps going there's the one i did hop over here in muscle my other needle in, wrap around, duck back under. Now I've got four. If you keep going all the way across, you can make it look from the outside pretty seamless when you do that. It's pretty cool. Now if the pattern says you should have more stitches when you're done, you're not going to pick up one for every V. You're going to muscle some through in some funky places. You're going to do what I call fudging it. But that is picking up stitches along your cast on edge. Well, thanks for joining us to talk about picking up stitches. The only ones I have left are the ones I picked up along the bottom, but we did demonstrate how to pick them up along the side. 
I hope this gives you confidence and joy in your crafting adventures as you come across patterns that, that say pick up and knit stitches. Give it a try. Like I said, there are other ways to do it. If you're picking up stitches along a garter edge where you've got the pearl bumps kind of sticking out, you might want to check out my, um, my garter tab cast on video because that talks a lot about how to do that. It's a little different, can give you some nice looks. So I really hope that you are finding joy and confidence in your crafting right now, especially as we are all staying home, you know? Um, you can keep going, you can keep doing this, you can keep advancing if you want to. Try something new. If you want, you can always reach out to me to contact me about doing a one-on-one -on -one lesson. I really love doing those. They're harder now that they're virtual, but that means if you're further away, we can still help. So um, check out the comments. Please leave your own comment. Please subscribe. Please let us know what you want to see next because I will keep making these videos and keep trying to diagram out and help you out with what to do. Okay? So please enjoy your crafting time. May it bring you joy and confidence and a little bit of peace during these crazy times. We love you all. Stay home and stay safe. Hi, kitty. Yeah? Yeah, my little helper.